Welcome to episode 6. Um, this episode is going to be all about these guys right here. Bees. Um, if you watched the previous episodes, you know I already have a bunch of bees from quarries. Uh, placing the quarries above beehives and getting a bunch of bees. Um, all this stuff on the side here is all to do with bees. I don't really know much about bee breeding or what you get or how it works, so we're all going to learn that together. But every item here is from Binny's uh, either bees or extra bees or the forestry mod pack, which uh, adds the bees. So, yeah, we're going to be breeding a bunch of bees and seeing what we can get from it and... Uh, trying to get all the types of bees. Um, w however, to start, we need a bunch of bees, obviously, in order to breed bees, so that's why we're here. These scoops, pretty uh, clear on what they do, break hives to collect bees. Haven't done this yet, so I hope it works. Okay, so you take some damage. I am wearing pretty well the best armor in the game and I took two full hearts so that was kind of weird however we got two more bees and it did a little damage down here so what I'm going to do I see another beehive over there and there I'm gonna fly around get as many bees as I can and then uh, I'll try to figure out how to breed them alright we broke all four of those scoops we had and we got a ton of different bees. Um, as you can see in here, we got a ton of meadows bees, and we got a ton of forest bees. Now it's important when you're out getting bees to start, you get at least two different types, because that's what you'll need for the first mutation when you're breeding. I think every hive you break drops one princess, and zero to three drones or one to three drones i guess you always get a drone so we got it done obviously uh i've done some breeding already these are not all just from those scoops because i uh yeah i did some breeding while i was trying to figure stuff out so there's a lot kind of going on i'll try to explain it one step at a time so this is a bee house the most basic area to store bees and to breed in. You can see it says no queen. So just a basic understanding of how it works to start off. You go, you break a hive somewhere, you get a princess, and you get a drone. So now you have a bee house. They're pretty easy to make. Just one of the combs you got from breaking the hives and then some planks and slabs. So you put your princess in with a drone. You can see it starts going up. So this is the bee's health, how much life they have left, and it turns into a queen from a princess. So this life bar will go down once it hits zero the queen will die and it will produce a new princess and one to three drones. So that's kind of the most basic bee breeding there is. This is where you'll probably start. It'll produce honeycombs uh, throughout while it's living. So that's where you start. And then the next upgrade is this apiary. So the apiary, I'll get another one. This is the exact same thing, okay? Except it's got these three slots here. So these are for frames. Now frames tell you what they do here. Production, speed up production, or double production, I guess lower decay but when you're starting off you probably want chocolate frames 
Now, chocolate frames lower the lifespan of the bee. Uh, you can stack all three of them. We'll stack. So when you put those in, get our queen going. This will say no flowers, but it does have flowers here, so it'll go away. But you do need flowers nearby your houses. So this is the long part when you're starting. You have to wait for the life bar to go down to get more bees so you can breed again. But in this apiary, which you want to get to pretty quickly because it's much faster, you can put in frames to slow down or speed up how quickly they die. You can see this one is already twice as far as this one that we started before. So you definitely want to set up apiaries first. But that, in essence, is just the very basic how to be breed bees and uh, how it works, how the bee house works and the apiary works. So, if you're like me, and I'm sure lots of people are, you don't want to wait for that one bee house to finish breeding so you can get more bees and breed more. That'll take too long. So, when you're starting out your first bees, you just build like 20 of them. That's what I did, at least. Um, I got like 20 bee houses here. Maybe not 20, maybe... 15 or 12. Anyways, you can place a ton of them. That's why you want to collect a bunch of bees to start with. Because you need one princess for each house. So, I needed to break one hive for every single bee house I have here. It's kind of cool. You can see all the different types of bees here that you have. You can see the different colors on the flowers. So, that's pretty nice. So, you can automate bee houses if you want, but it doesn't really make sense to do that, so wait until you have bee apiaries, or just apiaries I guess, and then you can set up your automation. So the automation here is pretty straightforward. We're using build craft pipes. You, collect, you connect a wooden pipe to the apiary, because the wooden pipes what uh, allows you to pull items out. So you get your wooden pipe, you put a any engine really, but you only need a redstone engine because it's not going to work too often. And then I have a gold pipe, and then I have this apiaris pipe, which is added to the game specifically for this, so that's kind of nice. And what this apiaris pipe does is you can set if you want bees to go certain ways. So I have it here set, any bees go black, and then anything goes white. So what that means is the items will come up here, any bees that are in there will go black, back down into the apiary, and anything else that doesn't fit in here will go white. And I have iron pipes, because they allow you to force items to go one direction. I have iron pipes on top of all these, pushing items to the right, and then the items will come down some more gold pipes, and then I have a couple more apiaris pipes, just so that all bees will go in here, and then any items the bees make will go in here, and here. I got two extra chests. It's important to know any bees, it just means it'll send as many bees as it can, but if uh, there's no room in the apiary, it won't send any more and they'll go white. In order to keep your apiaries running at max effectiveness, and also to build them in fact, we've also got some new machines that uh, we built and you'll need. So there's mainly three. There's a bunch more up here you can see forestry adds a ton of different machines but you mainly only need three and that is the squeezer and what the squeezer does do I have any nuts or seeds it 
So what the squeezer does, it squeezes seed oil out of seeds. Pretty straightforward. Every seed you put in, it'll give you 10 seed oil, and you need 1,000 seed oil in a bucket. So you can see I set up a bunch of squeezers here, just so I can get seed oil a little faster. And the seed oil, once you got your bucket of seed oil, you put into a carpenter. So a carpenter will use your seed oil and it is required to build specific things. So your apiary needs an impregnated casing or casing, sorry. Which is built in the carpenter as a chest, basically. The crafting uh, recipe for a chest except with the logs. So put in the crafting recipe like that it'll show up here take out whatever you already have in there and now this will take 250 seed oil I think to make one impregnated casing there you go and that'll build as long as it has resources down here um, forever basically so get rid of that. So that's what you need to build an apiary. Um, but in the apiary, obviously, you can put in frames. So to make a frame, uh, I got it right here. You need impregnated sticks and string. So you need more seed oil. That's why I've got so many seed oil things over here. And it's simply just two oak wood makes an impregnated, or two impregnated sticks, I guess. And that only takes a hundred seed oil per. But you'll need a ton of frames to keep your automation going and to keep everything stocked. So that's those two machines. This is just another carpenter, this is another squeezer, and this is the third machine, a centrifuge. This one isn't technically needed, but it definitely helps you a lot. So it'll take the combs you get, and it'll turn them into, depending on the type of cone, whatever's in it. But mainly what you want is these honey drops. And these honey drops go in the portable analyzer. Now the portable analyzer is pretty useful because when you find your wild bees, you see here unknown genome. Unknown genome. All you know is they're meadows, meadows bees, but all bees have an active and an inactive species. But without this portable analyzer, you'll never know what the inactive species is. You'll always just know what the active species is. So you can see this one is actually a Meadows Industrious. That's from me doing some breeding. This is a drone that I have bred for. But this is really important when you're breeding because the result of the queen is dependent on both the active and the inactive. So if this bee is bred, it's basically got a 50% chance to make a meadows bee and a 50% to make an industrious bee. So this is really important. And every bee you scan, you put up here to scan, takes one honey. So that's why you need the centrifuge. But once they're scanned, they're scanned forever until you breed them again, then obviously you'll need to rescan them because they become a different bee. So that is basically the three machines you'll need. The carpenter, the squeezer, and the centrifuge. And they're not too complicated, they're pretty easy. Although unfortunately, you do need a different uh, type of engine. They do not accept the buildcraft engines that I have down here. These are redstone engines. These are electrical engines. They do not work with redstone engines, unfortunately. So you'll have to craft 
a whole bunch of those. If you would like to, you know, discover the species of bees yourself and discover, you know, the combinations for mutations and to get new species, you might want to skip this part because I'm about to tell you exactly that, what bees you want to breed with what other bees in order to get mutations you want. So, the way I have it set out in this chest is I've got two bees here and those make the bees on the right. So, your two different species you start out with, putting any two species, doesn't have to be these two, any two species you get from the wild have a chance at mutating to a common drone, or a common bee, I guess. And then mutating that common bee back with any of your starting bees, I used a Meadows drone in this case, has a chance at a cultivated drone. Now, breeding your cultivated bees with your common bees has a chance at either a Noble drone or a Diligent drone. They can mutate into either of them. And this is kind of where it splits into two different paths. The one path with the Diligent bee you breed that back with the cultivated bee and you can get a chance at an unweary drone. And then you breed that back with your diligent bee and you have a small chance at the industrious drone. Now that is one of the bees you want to end with, uh, at least for the time being, because this guy here, you take him out, you analyze them, you can see the possible produce, pollen cluster. Now the next step in bee breeding is you want to build an alveary. Now to do this, you of course need pollen clusters. So that is why you want to stop at industrious drones for at least a while. And then if you take the noble drone and you breed that back with the cultivated drone, it has a chance to mutate into a majestic drone. And then the majestic drone back with a noble drone has a chance at mutating into the imperial drone. Now, same thing with the imperial drone. Looks super cool. But it has a chance or not a chance, but while it's living in your hive, it will produce royal jelly. Same thing with royal jelly for your alveary. Of course, royal jelly is needed to make scented paneline, which is used to make alvearies. So that is the path you want to follow. It's important once you get to each stage stay at that stage for a while. Breed a lot of those bees just so when you're breeding, let's say, your common drone with your cultivated drone, there's a chance that it doesn't mutate and all you get back is a common drone. So if you only have one cultivated drone, for example, you'll lose it. You'll be back a full step because now you're just back to common and you don't have any more cultivated. So make sure you stock up at each part you can see here, I stocked up on common, and then I stocked up on cultivated, and then I stocked up on unweary and diligent, you know, so make sure at each stage you're getting some extras so that uh, you don't get back to square one, unfortunately, because that sucks. So I haven't made any alvearies yet. I've been waiting on my royal jelly and my pollen clusters, but I think I've got enough now, so I will go make that. Well, I was certainly wrong. I had enough to build one of these alveary blocks. I had, uh, you know, roughly 12 royal jelly or something. I thought I could build an alveary, which I can. I did build. However, as you can see, it's telling me in chat, it must be at least 3x3x3 three by three by three in size. I 
I am nowhere close to building one of these. So, I went ahead and doubled up my automation. I got 20 apiaries working, all with uh, impregnated frames in them. And now, with this setup, I am actually close to making an alviary. So, now I will go do that. Something that is very helpful and will save you a lot of time is this guy. He is a apiarist. And if you trade with him enough, as you can see I've been doing, he unlocks this, which is proven frames. So these are what I'm using now, impregnated frames, which you can see double production and make genetic decay 0.4. These proven frames, double production, make genetic decay 0.3, so a little better, but their durability is 720, whereas here it's only 240. So it triples the durability, so in your apiaries, you only have to replace the frames uh, once, whereas with these ones you'd have to do it three times. So that's really helpful. So if you have an apiarist or a village nearby, make sure you buy as many proven frames as you can. And of course, as you go further into beekeeping, you can get some rare bees through the apiarist. So we finally got our alviary. Now this thing is 10 times more productive without any frames than this apiary is without any frames. And the cool thing about an alviary is you've got all these options that you can swap out the blocks for and they won't affect the production of the alviary negatively. Like changing a block out of the alviary block to a uh, swarmer won't affect the alviary, it just gives you more stuff. So what I've done is I swapped this block here out for a alviary lighting which allows this alviary to work throughout the night so all of these here apiaries I've been going flying over to my bed and sleeping every time at night time just so they keep working but I don't have to do that for this alviary which is super nice this is a hatchery just up here um, it makes larva which is super important for a little later on, DNA sequencing and all that. You can swap out the DNA of these, so that's pretty nice. I've got six frame housings, all with the proven frames that we got from the villagers. So now six frame housings instead of just three frames, which are allowed in the apiaries. So that's effectively doubling again on top of our already 10 times the productive production, sorry. And then over here, I've got an alviary swarmer, which I'm not using at the moment, but I can. How you use that is you put in any excess royal jelly you have, and it'll actually create a wild hive nearby like let's say right here it'll spawn one and you can break that with your scoop that we uh, used to originally get the bees and that'll give you a new princess so you can get more princesses more queens without actually having to go into the wild and get them yourself so that is pretty helpful now obviously there is a ton more you can do um, now that you've got an alviary, you can, you know, kind of go crazy with the DNA and stuff of these larvae. But this video, I just wanted to basically get to this point, make an alviary, show you guys how to get there, and how I got there, because this is my first alviary I've built. And of course, we can use the same automation that we have here. We just need a wooden pipe and uh, an apiaris pipe. You can use the exact same automation here. And these frame housings, you can actually feed frames into. So you don't have to manually put them in like you do in the apiaries. So that's pretty nice as well. 
obviously there's a ton of stuff in this mod pack I could not cover. I uh, can only make the video so long. Don't have 40 hours of uh, talking in me for this video, unfortunately. You can see uh, just all the rare types of bees there are. We barely scratched the surface. And uh, we didn't get into any DNA stuff. I did tinker with it a little just to see what it was like. There's a ton more information there and a ton more work to do. So this is where we'll call it. Um, shout out to my three subscribers. You guys are super cool. And thanks everyone for watching. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.